Whether you're in a straight up castle or a nice tent in the wilderness, where you live in Animal Crossing has kind of been one of the biggest and more important aspects. But man, have things changed over the years. Matter of fact, no two Animal Crossing games have identical housing possibilities. Each and every game is different in its own way. So let's take a look at how the houses have changed and evolved throughout the Animal Crossing series, starting way back at the very beginning with the first generation of Animal Crossing games, Animal Forest, through Animal Crossing E Plus for the GameCube. Thank you. Now with these games, things started off simply. In the upper middle of your town, there would be this acre dedicated just to the housing for players. In this section, you would have four vacant houses and players would get to choose which house they wanted to move into. Now, besides the location of the four houses, players did have a little bit that they got to choose that was different between each house, like they each had their own unique wallpaper and floor, so there were some differences, though it was never like one rundown house was way nicer than the other one. Yes, in the early days of Animal Crossing games, we just got houses right away. There were no tents, we just got to move in somewhere and actually have a real roof over our head. The houses were simple and small, but hey, they were an actual house, and these first iterations of houses, being quite small, only had 4x4 four four spaces or squares available in each house. Now of course, there's a handful of debts that you have to pay through so you can upgrade your house, and eventually your house will be expanded quite substantially. Your main room alone can be upgraded a few times, eventually becoming an 8x8 eight eight space, which, you know, is 64 squares, which is way more than the 16 you originally had. You also can get this nice large basement of 8x8 eight eight more units, doubling your space, though you couldn't fully customize your basement appearance. And then finally, you would get an upstairs unit at a modest sized 6x6 six six units. So in total, this house was 164 square feet, which I did some math. If you were to pay off all of your debts, you're paying for about 8,000 bells per square foot. So like probably the equivalent of living in LA, I think. Now, outdoor customization is pretty limited. With Tom Nook's offerings, you can paint your roof. And uh, that's about it. I guess that's kind of cool. There's a couple of different colors you can choose from, but yeah, I guess there's not that much depth when it comes to outdoor decorating. Now, something exclusive to the first generation of houses in Animal Crossing is if you wanted to save your game, you had to talk to these little gyroid things, which were permanently there, jiggling. Okay, but technically, we're not done yet with this first gen of games. In Animal Forest E+, the one that only came out in Japan, after you pay off all of your debt, Tom Nook does give you an option to buy a private island, which is super expensive, but you can do it. It's pretty much just like the Game Boy Island, and you have that cabana inside, but you can decorate the cabana, which gives you technically an extra 8x8 unit that a single player can use and have access to. I'm not sure if this one should fully count. We're gonna separate them, but yeah, you guys can decide if it counts or not. That does give an extra 64 square feet, obviously. But what about Animal Crossing Wild World? Now, the game for the DS, and even if you have multiple players, you were limited to just one house per game. Everyone else had to be roommates, and that's just the way that it was. Also, no basements allowed. They don't exist in Wild World. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, firstly, in Wild World, you don't actually get to pick where your house is. It just spawns with your town, and that's what you get. You do get a basic 4x4 room to start out, much like the GameCube version, and you can upgrade it up to the same 8x8 size. But where you would normally get a basement in the older Animal Crossing game, things are different here. You can get a 6x6 upstairs, then an additional 6x6 room in the back, left, and right, which we assume is for other players since we all have to share a house together. There is also an addict that you can't customize or design in any way whatsoever. There's just enough beds for whoever is playing in the game, and that's where you go to save your game. But I guess you could say canonically it eliminates the need for a bedroom in your house if you wanted to think of that that way. But yeah, we're not counting the attic space because it's not a place that you can actually decorate. But yeah, look at Wild World. It was so luxurious. You had all these rooms and windows and it's a nice big old house. For the modest price of 3.5 million bells to be fully paid off, this house is of course bigger than the GameCube house. The lack of basement does even it out a bit at 208 square feet, being the biggest single location for a player between the two games. City Folk was interesting though, because it took elements from both previous games and then tried to make things a little different, like slightly different. This time, there's no more roommates. Players get to choose between one of four vacant houses, but this time, 
time they're randomly spread around the town not in like a dedicated acre inside the house once again you start with the 4x4 but eventually the main floor can be upgraded to a larger 8x8 space and then from there the space is very similar to what you would get on the GameCube version and with basements finally back with its 8x8 size you could have a cool basement and you could customize the floor and walls which was a new thing unique to city folk and then you could get the top room back for another 6x6 room like the GameCube version but then to make this one even more unique than the GameCube version besides the customizable basement you can add a flag outside your house once you pay everything off so you have that now sure city folk doesn't break any records but it is still a nice sized house but then we get to generation 4 which is the 3ds era of animal crossing games which really came and shook things up a little bit it's kind of unique so when we look at this one it's interesting how things kind of played out especially for this reason a lot of people look to animal crossing new leaf as one of the best animal crossing games in the series let's see what happened with the houses here for the first time ever when you move into a town you don't actually have a house for the player to move into nope this was the game that downgraded everyone to a tent but with the tent process it did mean for the first time ever players got to choose exactly where their house would be which was a really awesome detail and if there were more players added to the town they would just start off with a tent before getting a house too which was kind of nice because if you are playing on a single cartridge like most people did play you didn't have four people playing in your game if this game didn't go the roommate route it could have been kind of annoying like in city folk in the original GameCube one just to have vacant houses sitting in your town taking up space where you could maybe decorate or do something unique with the area I think it was a good decision to remove the houses already established and let players pick and build their house based on who's actually playing the game now it's interesting my entire life I thought Animal Crossing New Leaf started players out with the smallest home in the form of the tent but matter of fact the tent is actually not the smallest it's the exact same 4x4 space that the previous games had the only difference is that in this case you can't decorate the floor or the walls because obviously it's a tent now once you paid off your first debt where you finally get a real house to live into that isn't a tent you get moved into an identically sized unit but this one has walls and a floor so you can decorate those now this game's interesting it has a lot of upgrades that are surprisingly different in one way or another the main room is pretty common and you can eventually upgrade it to the big 8x8 space but then when you start expanding other things it gets a little weird like for instance you can add a very small 4x4 upstairs and once you have that you can choose the order that you expand the rest of your house in you can actually expand the upstairs eventually to a full 8x8 space which is a first for the series and then you can add smaller rooms to the left back and right sides of your house then you can go and upgrade those again and get those all up to 8x8 sized rooms as well which is absolutely massive this one kind of resembles the wild world house except you can now upgrade those side rooms but then there's also a basement you can add in which once again it starts out very small but once you upgrade it up you could have another 8x8 room which once again massive mansion sized house also it's worth noting when it comes to Animal Crossing New Leaf the existence of the attic is now gone you don't have to save from uh, your attic anymore by sleeping in the bed so there is no attic so that's a little area that was only in wild world and city folk no more attics and they wouldn't be brought back again later on either also animal crossing new leaf was known for having quite a bit of customization options for the exterior of your house which was a big new addition to animal crossing and to this day i don't think there has been anything as unique as some of the decorative ideas you could put on your house in animal crossing new leaf like you could do some pretty crazy things new horizons had some stuff too but new leaf stood out definitely for sure now here's something that's really interesting though animal crossing new leaf is unique look how large the space is 384 square units and i'm just gonna say new horizons did things differently with their house approach you might have noticed this if you've played a lot of new horizons already compared to what we just talked about with new leaf we'll look at that in a second but first there is another game that came out in between both of these games and i promise you the results for this next one are surprising let's look at animal crossing Pocket Camp. Okay, for a game that has you decorating an RV, 
You have surprisingly a lot of space and upgrades available in this game. And let's get into the details here because it is a little confusing. Now, from what I can tell with Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, I haven't put hundreds and hundreds of hours into the game. And it'll be something I want to take a closer look at in the future. But it seems like in Pocket Camp, there are three different units that you can actually decorate, which means you have a ton of space. Now, there are the campsites, which can vary in space, but from what I could find online, some of them are as large as 24 by 24 sized areas, which is pretty big. Then there's cabins, which are 12 by 8 unit sized houses, but they have three floors to them, which are bigger than any like main sized Animal Crossing house. But then also it's a little confusing when calculating these units because I think the units in this game are smaller than what we're used to in a typical Animal Crossing game. Like all of the items and furniture are slightly scaled down. And there's like this camera trick almost with the way that the items are placed that make them look smaller and bigger based on where you're standing, I think. But then we get to the actual van itself, which is like the main thing that the game was advertised as you getting to decorate and you can upgrade this thing multiple times to be pretty big. The RV can go as large as a 10 by 16 square unit space and then there's two floors to it which I think is hilarious. <laughs> That makes the whole area 320 square units. That makes the playable space in the RV alone bigger than the city folk or wild world houses. I'll be honest, just reading these numbers at first, I wasn't really too sure I believed it, but taking some time to look at people's vans that they've upgraded and shown off online. Yeah, it looks like if you fully upgrade everything out, you can have this massive sized RV. Once again, more in this theory that there's some optical illusions going on with how the items scale down in size, the units look more narrow than in other games. It's actually a really clever design, but I mean also, imagine someone fitting all of this inside of a real van. Now on some website guides for Pocket Camp, they even mention a translation of size for squares. I think everything is at like half sized when actually placed, so I might be onto something with me thinking that these items are scaled differently than a main game. So what do we count when it comes to Pocket Camp? Do we count the outside space? I'm leaning towards no because then in New Horizons we have to count everything you can place outside side, do we actually count the cabin as a part of this? Because in one sense, it is an indoor area, much like the cabana that we did count from the beginning. But does the cabin actually count as the player's own location here? I think this is different than counting the cabana. And this is more just a place you're decorating overall, much like what we would see in the, like the 3DS version of Happy Home Designer or even Happy Home Paradise when we get to New Horizons. We don't count everything that we can decorate as our own own location. We only count our own locations, I guess. That being said, look at this chart. Pocket Camp's RV size is more than enough alone for what we're counting for a mobile game like this. I still think it is hilarious how big these little vans can end up getting, but nonetheless, we have one more main game to talk about, and that's Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, like we mentioned, things are different here compared to all of the other Animal Crossing games once again. Now, much like Animal Crossing New Leaf, Animal Crossing New Horizons has you starting out with a tent that you get to pick the location for. Very cool, Tom Nook. Good job. But overall, when it comes to Animal Crossing New Horizons houses, the maximum size is still smaller than what we could have done in Animal Crossing New Leaf. Though, Animal Crossing New Horizons has one unique unique thing that stands out against every other Animal Crossing game, but it's the fact that this is the first game that allows you to have up to eight houses on your island at a time. That's quite a bit of extras and extra buildings and maximum potential size, I guess, if we're going to talk about like overall console capacity. For an individual player though, it is a little bit smaller. Now things are different though. You start off with that small 4x4 tent, but by the time you pay it off with Tom Nook, this time using Nook Miles instead of Bells, the first house that you get is actually bigger for once and it's larger than the regular 4x4 that we've seen in every other Animal Crossing game as a starter house. This time you go straight to having the 6x6 sized house which is what we originally would see as a first expansion in any of the older games. Then from there you're able to upgrade your house to the bigger 8x8 size which is kind of standard for the main room but things get completely different and unique when it comes to New Horizons with how they handled the additional rooms. Now when you add the side rooms on the left, right, and back side, these rooms are permalocked at 6x6, six six, which is the middle expansion from Animal Crossing New Leaf. So these rooms are bigger than when you initially would get these side rooms compared to New Leaf, but they're not as big 
big as you could potentially upgrade them to back in the New Leaf days. Then, in a completely new twist to the Animal Crossing formula, we got to see basements and attics that were in narrow dimensions, I guess maybe taking a note from Pocket Camp, and not having just square rooms technically anymore, as both the basement and the attic in Animal Crossing New Horizons are 8 by 6 squares. So yeah, dimensions are a little bit weird here. To calculate the square footage, I'm gonna have to recall some 5th grade mathematics. I came up with the number 268 square feet. Someone check my math, please. Yep, 268 square feet. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> New Horizons lost, but I'm proud of my math. So now we have the finished chart that we can look at, and New Horizons here is a uh, third place, interestingly enough, below Pocket Camp's van and New Leaf's giant mansion house, but still above the first three generations of houses. Now, of course, there's a few other things to consider because there is the Happy Home Paradise expansion for Animal Crossing New Horizons, which gives you access to decorate houses and vacation homes for other players, which we already decided we're not counting. And I also want to note that we we can decorate special locations like the hospital or the school, but those aren't like, once again, the player's locations. So they are bigger locations you can decorate and technically overall comparatively, then in that case, New Horizons would clear the board if we counted those. But strictly speaking, houses, New Horizons lands in its third place spot, which kind of makes sense. Now, New Horizons does also have pretty unique customization options when it comes to the outside. Maybe not as bombastic or as pompous as some of the designs you could have in your new leaf home, but there was enough customizations that I think, yeah, these look mostly pretty cool. I really like the Japanese aesthetic houses too. Those are just like a little bonus plus point. Also, of course, it's worth noting New Horizons lets you decorate literally anywhere. So when it comes to outdoor appearances, you definitely have way more options to decorating the outside section of your house than any other game, and you can move your mailbox, which, I don't know, that's kind of cool, right? Besides the customization options, the fact that you can move your mailbox, I think's actually a really awesome touch. To this day, I still think it's interesting that Animal Crossing New Horizons never got an additional update expanding the side rooms of the houses. It seemed like something that would be so easy to do and almost expected considering the giant size of what you would get in New Leaf. To go a little bit smaller with New Horizons was a unique choice to say the least, but maybe that was something to do with the fact that there was like eight houses that you could have on your island at a time. I don't really know. Nonetheless, what did you guys think? Which house across Animal Crossing was your favorite? And when I mean favorite, I don't mean favorite in like overall space. I'm talking favorite in functionality to you as a player. Personally, I always felt like the City Folk or original game layout was typically a Enough. I felt like with Wild World and New Leaf, but specifically Wild World, having all of those rooms would be sometimes more stressful trying to figure out what to decorate in each room, but Wild World was definitely more problematic for me because there was less overall furniture types in that game. New Horizons felt similar to those other games by having almost too many rooms, but then they did the big 2.0 update, which added all of the furniture from Happy Home Paradise, and you could do a lot more with furniture and making cool themed rooms, and I felt like like I could always come up with ideas for decorating interiors, so I think New Horizons also is really good. But maybe I'm biased and have a little bit of nostalgia for City Folk, which I think is an underappreciated Animal Crossing game nonetheless. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed. You can double check that you're subscribed. I, listen, even if you don't subscribe to any other channel, try it out. Just change your mind later if you don't like the Animal Crossing content I end up putting out. That being said, huge thank you to everyone who has been subscribed and supported this channel and helped us grow to where we're at. This has been a lot of fun. Otherwise, that's it for today. We'll see you guys next time with a brand new video.